Okay guys, in this uh, tutorial I want to show you how to set up a uh, Maya physical sun and sky. Uh, the first thing you would always do before uh, doing any sort of mental ray rendering in Maya is go to Window, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, and you always want to make sure that the Maya to MR plugin is loaded and it's also set to auto load. So it already is, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. Uh, I'm going to go in and open a scene that I already created called Maya Physical Sun and Sky template number three so I'm going to open that up and I'm just going to go ahead and open the render dialog box here with the render settings currently uh, it is set to render using Maya software I'm going to change that to mental ray you always need to do that uh, then I'm going to go under indirect lighting on the tabs here so render using my mental ray under the tabs we want to go to indirect lighting and we want to say create physical sun and sky and I'm going to go ahead and create that and then now let's go ahead and take a render and see what it looks like here and what we have here is this very nice uh, lighting algorithm we have very nice soft uh, lighting look with a very nice soft shadow so the first thing uh, I always like to do uh, once I set up any sort of mental ray rendering is I always like to go to the quality settings and change it to production and what this is going to do is it's always going to use the highest quality um, anti-aliasing and um, sampling settings uh, for the render but you'll notice here that when I change the quality to production that suddenly my shadows kind of went to this dark side of the moon look and the reason for that is because when you're using Maya Physical Sun, whenever you change the quality settings, you have to go back over here to the indirect lighting tab and always turn on final gathering again. For some reason, when you change the presets, the quality, it always disables final gathering. So in Maya Physical Sun, uses final gathering. So you, if you change anything under quality, you're always going to have to go back and uh, turn final gathering back on. Alright, now the final gathering is back on. We have our nice uh, soft shadows here again. Uh, the only other thing I want to do at this point is you can see here that I'm just rendering using my um, my regular old perspective camera. Alright, and at this point what I would like to do is create a custom camera uh, that actually has some uh, different settings from the perspective camera. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to panels, perspective, and I'm going to say new to create a new camera and I'm going to name this new camera render cam and then I'm going to go under the cam shape node in the attribute editor and I want to go ahead and change uh, some of the display settings so uh, under display options I want this camera to uh, display the, the film resolution is currently 640 by 4080. When you saw I turned that on, suddenly this lit up. Uh, you can't actually see the frame, and the reason for that is because our overscan setting is set to 1. In order to make sure that you can always see the frame in whatever view you're in, you have to turn the overscan setting something higher than 1 to like a 1.2 or um, like a 1.3. And then what happens is the, the view will always clamp down to make sure that uh, you can see your render frame. So now what this little box here represents is my actual frame that will be rendered. So if I go ahead and re-render this, we'll see here that my rendered image will have the exact same dimensions as this little white outline here. And that's really hot. Um, so let me figure this out. Okay, so I uh, just discovered a glitch with uh, Maya Physical Sun and Sky, uh, where if you create the sun and sky, and I'm going to go ahead and render this to illustrate this. I'm glad I found this because uh, you guys may have inadvertently discovered this yourselves and then not known how to fix it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to fix it. So I have here the original uh, perspective view that uh, was in the scene when I created the sun and sky. 
And then now I'm going to go ahead and go to the panels perspective, new, and I'm going to create a new camera. And then I'm going to go ahead and render that camera out. Now you'll notice here that when I render out the new camera, everything is going to be uh, completely messed up. And unfortunately, just rendered the my old camera, so I want to render using perspective one, which is my new camera. And uh, in a second here, you'll see that everything will be completely blown out and wonky. And uh, the reason for that is because when you create a new camera after your sun and sky has been created, uh, the linkage, the hookups, are, are not the same. So I want to show you how to fix that. What we're going to do here is um, I'm going to show you how to delete the sun and sky from your scene once you've created it. So the first thing you're going to have to do is select the light, the directional light itself, and go ahead and delete that. And then you're going to have to go into Window, Rendering Editor's Hypershade, and you're going to go under uh, Utilities, and you're just going to grab all three of these, uh, MIA, um, Physical Sun and Sky, Physical Sun, and MIA Exposure. And you're just going to grab all those and go ahead and delete those. And then I'm going to go ahead and re-render re this to illustrate that uh, the Maya Physical Sun and Sky has been deleted from our scene. Okay, it's gone now. So we're back to the basic lighting. And then what we want to do is I'm going to go to Panels, Perspective, and I want to select that Perspective 1 uh, camera. And... Uh, I'm gonna actually I want to delete that camera so I'm gonna go to window outliner uh, perspective one I want to get rid of that one I actually want to use that render cam which I was setting up in the beginning so now uh, I'm gonna go under panels perspective and I want to use render cam and then I want to go under the attribute settings for this render cam and I want to display the resolution and I want to set the overscan to a 1.2 or a 1.3 under the render cam shape uh, display options. Okay. So you want to display the resolution and you want to set the overscan to anywhere from one, uh, 1.2 to 1.5 so that you can see your render frame in the dialog box. The other thing you want to do is you want to open up your render settings and um, you want to go under the common tab and you want to change your resolution for your final project uh, renders you're going to want to use uh, HD 720 which is just a preset for HD uh, 720p which is 1280 by 720 you want to click on the box here that says maintain with height ratio and then while we're previewing this, we want to go ahead and cut this resolution in half. So I'm going to go to 640 by 360, and I'm just going to use that temporarily while we're tweaking our settings. So now that we have those set, I'm going to go ahead and hide that. And now I want to confirm that our, uh, our settings have taken place here. Okay. Everything looks good. The rendered box is the rendered frame I see. Now I'm ready to go ahead and set up the Maya Physical Sun and Sky again in my scene. And I'm going to do that by clicking on the render settings. And I'm going to click the indirect lighting tab. And under Physical Sun and Sky, I'm going to click Create. You see here over on the right in my attribute uh, box, we have Maya Physical Sun and Sky with a bunch of properties light up. Uh, we can also notice that if I hide these that and hit the F4 key, we have that directional light, which is back in our scene. And then I just want to confirm that everything took, so I'm going to go ahead and do a render. And there we go. We've got our, our nice uh, physical sun and sky render um, ready to go. Everything's linked up to the new camera and I'm ready to show you what uh, what the settings do. So what we want to do here is we notice here that this everything's kind of a little pixelated and uh, a little rough around the edges. So what we want to do is we want to go back into the render settings and under quality the first thing I usually do is I change my 
uh, quality preset from draft to production. Now remember, when you do that, indirect lighting gets temporarily broken because the final gathering gets disabled. So we always have to go to indirect lighting and turn final gathering back on. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and render this out. And now we can see here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it after this thing gets compressed, but uh, we have a much, much better uh, looking image here. All the, uh, the edges on my sphere here are no longer aliased and, and clunky. They're all nice and smooth and anti-aliased. Okay, so now that we have the uh, indirect uh, lighting set up with my physical sun and sky, and we have our quality set to production, which is the higher quality rendering, now I want to show you what some of these parameters do for the physical sun and sky itself. So what we want to do here is I'm going to go over to my render cam view and we can see here our render frame. I'm going to hit the F4 key so that I can go to wireframe and that little directional light that we see is basically uh, the sun shape which uh, houses all the attributes that we're going to start modifying. So the first thing I always like to do is just grab that light, get kind of right in front of it, and then I'm going to turn on the rotate and I'm just going to rotate it so it's kind of looking directly at the camera, alright? So I'm going to go back over here to shaded mode and I've got that icon kind of pointing directly at the camera. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the sun into the frame, alright? And it may take a few tries, so I'm going to go ahead, here's try number one. I've got the sun and it's angled directly at kind of my eyesight. So I'm going to render that out. Okay. And so I missed it slightly. Oh no, it's right there. Uh, so there it is. The sun is actually in frame and that's what I was after. Alright, so what we want to do here, and the mountains are kind of in silhouette because the sun is actually rising up from behind them. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to go over some of the settings that are available to you under the uh, under the physical sun and sky. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the light, the directional light, and then open up the attribute editor, which is right here. If you don't have it, you can click on it right here to get it open, or you can click on this icon right here, which would also open up the attribute editor. Um, it's totally up to you, or you can select the light and hit control A which would also open up the attribute editor. Once the attribute editor is open what you're looking for is you want to go under all these nodes here and you want to find the, the node that says MIA physical sky. Once you have the physical sky node selected this is where um, the most of your parameters are for adjusting the look of, of this lighting algorithm. Okay so my goal is not to show you every single uh, setting under the sun so to speak um, but just the settings that you're going to use in order to tweak your lighting and get it to look better. The first of which under the My MIA physical sky node is the multiplier. The multiplier all that does is it makes things either brighter or darker. The default is 1 you can just take it down to 0.9 and render it again and you'll just see that basically everything just gets knocked down a little bit so the sun becomes less intense basically so if your sun is super hot and it's over blowing out your scene and over lighting it you just want to take the multiplier down. I'm going to take that down to something even smaller like a 0.5 and I'll go ahead and render that again And you can see what happens here is uh, everything's just getting a little darker and then the sun disk is even changing size. All right. So uh, this R unit conversion, uh, you don't really want to touch that at all. Haze is uh, exactly what it says. If I hit uh, 0.5 and crank that number up, basically that's going to create uh, more haze in my uh, atmosphere and it's going to kind of give it more of a, uh, a smoggy kind of a look. Um, and you can play around with that and see uh, what sort of uh, different effects you can get. Uh, let's go ahead and take it up higher. 
the rule of thumb whenever you start tweaking these settings is to just uh, kind of double it so if it were set to one you'd set it to two and then if you didn't see any results when it was set to two you'd set it to four if you didn't see any results there you'd set it to eight you just keep doubling it until you get a, a result and then you start dialing it back now we can definitely see here there's more haze in the atmosphere all right so I'm gonna go ahead and take that back down to the default uh, red blue shift um, this will actually tint your scene to the red or the blue all right so you would think that a negative value would shift it towards red and a positive value would shift it towards blue just based on the fact that this says red and blue well that's not the way it works if you use a negative so I'm going to use a negative 0.5 it will shift the scene blue and if I use a positive value 0.5 it will shift the scene red Okay, so you can play with that. A little goes a long way when it uh, comes to the red blue shift. Uh, I used a pretty high value uh, for an intense result. Um, you can uh, get pretty decent settings by just going in increments of 0.1 or 0 0.05 even uh, to just get subtle shifts. I'm going to go ahead and take that back to zero. Uh, saturation is basically exactly what it says. If I uh, up the saturation level, basically all my colors will get more intense. Um, you can play with that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take that back to the default, which is 1. Horizon height. Uh, this can be very helpful uh, if you have a scene that uh, does not ha is not completely self-contained like my scene is here. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the background layer and I'm going to go ahead and render this again and we can see here that even with no background in place this little line here uh, shows up and what that is is that is the horizon line so if I select that light again and I'm going to hit control A for attribute editor and I'm going to go to the MIA physical sky and under the horizon height I'm going to uh, change this so I want my horizon to go lower so uh, this is another setting where a little goes a long way. So I'm going to do a negative 0.1 and I'm going to re-render this image. And my uh, horizon dropped a little so I'm going to do a little bit uh, higher. I'm going to do a negative 0.3 or a little lower and I'm going to drop it lower just so you can see the effect. And you can see my horizon just keeps dropping in the frame. So what you want to do is if you had a scene where like say there was an ocean and the horizon line was peaking up above the ocean you would use this to, sh to shift the horizon line down below your ocean so that uh, it looked like a natural seamless environment so a normal uh, a good setting I like to do is just always negative point one works pretty well uh, ground color is basically the color for the ground here um, on the horizon line uh, the night color uh, you can play with that uh, usually just leave it alone at uh, black the, this would be an effect where if you wanted it um, when it was dark for the uh, night sky to have a slight ambient color you could do that by dialing it up you could give it a blue or uh, a red or whatever you wanted um, sun direction um, probably don't really want to mess with those settings here you can change the sun direction right in the interface just by selecting the directional light here and moving it uh, whichever way you want um, sun disk intensity so uh, let me go ahead and I want to show my background again and I want to go to the attribute editor because I want to continue editing the MIA physical sky now uh, the sun disk intensity uh, basically is going to uh, make this uh, sun icon here hotter or, uh, or uh, darker so I'm going to do a 0 0.5 and I'll go ahead and render this out again and my sun disk got a little less intense alright if I want to crank that up I can go to a value of 2 
and this time I'm going to render the region. Whoops. I'm going to hit escape here to cancel this render. Uh, escape key always cancels the render, that's good to know. If you uh, start into a render and you change your mind, all you got to do is hit escape and it'll stop it. Uh, I just wanted to illustrate here the use of the render region. Alright, so what I want to do here is I want to just drag a little box around the sun and I wanted to change the disk intensity to something higher and then I want to render it and I'm rendering the region so that you can see the difference between the two so this one's a little brighter I'm going to change this to an 8 let's try to really exaggerate this effect and not a whole lot's happening let's try 16 and that uh, doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's try 32. Okay. Um, that doesn't seem to be doing that much. We have the uh, sun disk scale, which is going to change the size of the sun disk. That sun disk is actually a post procedure. You can see here when it renders the frame, it puts it in at the end, and it's because it's kind of doing a little compositing trick at the end. So there we just changed the size of the sun by using the sun disk scale. We have the sun glow intensity, which is going to change the glow there around the sun. Okay, so it just made my sun a lot hotter uh, with more glow. Uh, the sun disk intensity, I wish I could have gotten that to do uh, do some more, but uh, I think that just must be uh, one of these settings where the differences is very subtle. Alright, so uh, those are all the settings under the physical sun and sky. Um, now that we've tweaked a few of them, I just want to show you a few other things. So uh, this works great if you wanted your sun to be kind of in frame in the background. But you can, uh, most of the time, you're going to want to change the light so that it's not in the frame and I'm just going to orient the sun on the other side of my object so the sun is shining down on my object and I want it to kind of be that golden hour which is you know just about an hour before sunset and I'm going to go ahead and render this again the best lighting in nature uh, for filming stuff if you want kind of that warm and fuzzy look is to um, either shoot a, an, an hour or two after sun up or about an hour or two before sundown and that's what I'm always trying to create uh, with the Maya Sun and Sky. So uh, that might be a little too dark there. Let's go ahead and bring my sun up a little bit. That's better. And then let's go ahead and um, give it just a slight red shift. So I'm going to go positive 0.1 to uh, tint the, the sun red a little bit. Alright, and that's not bad. I want to show you one other setting. So um, under the, uh, the attributes, under the Maya Physical Sun node, this is where you change the shadow softness. So right now we have kind of a harder shadow. Let's say that you wanted a much softer shadow. The way that you would do that is go to go under the MIA Physical Sun node and go under the shadow softness and you change that from the default 1 to 2 and then I'll go ahead and render the frame. And this uh, setting is a bit of a resource hog, so I'm going to go ahead and just select half my shadow region. And a uh, softness value of 2 didn't really seem to do that much, so I'm going to go ahead and double that. And it's getting a little bit softer. And so if I double that, I'm going to go to 8.
and now it's getting much softer and then if I wanted to really blow it out I could go to 16 and now we're getting a very very soft shadow that probably looks a little unnatural so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this at 8 that looked pretty good to me and now we're ready to go ahead and bring in um, another um, some model a vehicle to actually light something so this uh, lighting algorithm wor will work exceptionally well for your environments uh, because it's kind of um, scale independent you the the light will uh, light any scene of any scale without you having to do much of anything at all so let's go ahead and hide this sphere and I'm gonna go ahead and import that um, that render file that I already made for the vehicle the one where I basically deleted all the uh, extra um, geometry that I didn't need so I'm gonna go grab that scene which is the Bronco concept render I'm gonna import that and the car comes into my scene I'm gonna select it in up arrow select the entire hierarchy and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, I want to rotate my vehicle to my lighting and not the other way around because I already spent a good deal of uh, time tweaking my lighting so there's my little directional light and it's facing this way so what I want to do is I want to select my vehicle and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate it so that it is uh, facing into my sunset and then I'm going to uh, go underneath the world here and I'm going to pull my vehicle down so the tires just penetrate the ground and that will basically prevent uh, my render from looking like uh, my vehicle's floating All right. and now that I have my vehicle in the scene I'm going to go ahead and render it out Okay, and that's uh, that's not looking too bad. It might be a little dark. Um, I want to show you uh, something else under the render settings uh, because when the more detailed your scene gets, um, the more you are going to have to up a certain parameter. So see how the shadows kind of a little uh, dissipated, and um, you don't really notice it yet. But parts of the vehicle are kind of uh, being rendered. Um, with uh, less quality than they could all right and the more complex your scene gets so the more detailed geometry you have in the scene the more you're going to need to change this setting here which is under um, indirect lighting final gathering accuracy all right so the default accuracy is 100 and that's kind of a preview setting uh, what you want to do is you're going to increase that setting in order to get a higher quality render so uh, right now it's at 100 I can recommend anything from 500 so if this were a final render for your scene you might want to take it up to 500 and I'm going to pause so we don't have to you don't have to wait through this Okay, so I upped the quality uh, to on the accuracy to 500, and you can see here that uh, we got a little bit uh, of a difference. It's subtle, but there's enough of a difference between uh, renders um, that that uh, you really need to watch that. So if you're not getting what you want, uh, you're going to have to increase the accuracy. The value for this can be anywhere from 100 all the way up to 10,000. Um, so you're just going to have to dial that in to find out what uh, your optimal setting is. Um, 
The other thing I've noticed here is that uh, now that I have my vehicle in the scene, uh, I'm not really that excited about um, the softness of my shadows that uh, I did with the, uh, the softness setting. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go over here. Actually, I'm going to grab it this way. I'm going to go to Window, Outliner, and I'm going to grab the Sun Direction, and then I'm going to hit Control A to open up the attributes, and then I'm going to go find my Maya Physical Sun node. And I did the soft shadows of an 8, and I'm going to dial that back down to a 2. And I'm going to render this again, and I should get a, just a little bit nicer uh, look from what I want. The 8 setting was okay on the sphere, but uh, once I got the car into the scene, uh, that 8 was just uh, way too exaggerated for my taste. So I'm going to take that back down to a 2. I'll pause so you don't have to wait for the... Okay, so there we go. Uh, I reduced the uh, softening of my shadows. I like that. That's a much better look. Uh, the cool thing about uh, the Maya Physical Sun is that um, unlike the AO render where you are limited in terms of what kind of materials you can have in your scene, uh, which is really just one because it's a surface shader, uh, with the Maya Physical Sun you can actually have all sorts of materials like blends, uh, Lamberts, whatever you want. You can have textures. Um, so uh, why that's important is because I actually have here a blend material. So if I select this on my headlamp cover, so I've actually modeled some of the interior parts on my headlamp. And so I've got a transparency and I also wanted to uh, do a little bit of a reflectivity. And uh, if you use the Maya Physical Sun and Sky, you can actually do that. And uh, if you do an AO render, you do not have that as an option. So I'm going to go ahead and just render up closer to show that show that uh, the uh, benefit of Maya Physical Sun is that uh, you can have uh, more advanced materials going on without uh, messing up your your modeling uh, render which is you know everyone wants to see that just kind of clay colorless look whenever anyone's looking at uh, a modeling reel um, but you know if you spend a lot of time modeling the interior of your headlamp and the, out the exterior of the headlamp is glass uh, it's certainly well within your uh, rights as an artist to go ahead and, and uh, put that material on there so that you can show off the interior of your model. So I'm going to pause and uh, when this comes back uh, I'll show you the results. Okay, so now uh, I've rendered this out and you can see here that I have my blend material which is a transparent headlamp uh, so that you can see the interior of the model details. Um, the only thing uh, you have left here is once you're satisfied with your render, uh, all you're going to have to do is open the render settings and you want to change um, your resolution under common back to 1280 by 720 and you want to render your frame for real. I'm going to re-render here. This one's going to take a little longer so I'm going to go ahead and pause it okay so that's it uh, uh, went ahead and rendered that out that one took uh, four minutes so I say spared you the uh, weight of, uh, of going through that now that I have my image rendered at uh, 1280 by 720 uh, all I need to do under the render view here is go to file save image and I'm going to save it as a PNG so I'm going to call it uh, Bronco Grill 01.png save it and then uh, if I uh, go out to my tutorials here and I'm just gonna go ahead and open the image cool thing about a PNG is that it will open with uh, the uh, standard Windows picture viewer so here we go Uh, where did I say that to? File, save image, physical sun and sky images.
Oh. Hold on one second. Alright, so I was copying to my uh, thumb drive at the same time, and so I had a little bit of an issue there. So there it is. I open up the PMG. Cool thing is it'll open up in uh, the Windows standard uh, picture viewer. And there you go. So that's what you guys are going to do for your assignments. I want you to turn in uh, five to ten of those uh, for your hand, your environment, and your vehicle. All right. So five to ten renders of each hand, environment, and vehicle. Uh, all unique uh, camera angles. And that's what you're going to turn in. For the final project, along with your my binary files that uh, with the accompanying uh, material. That's it. Good luck to you, and uh, I can't wait to see your uh, finished renders. Thanks. Bye.